welcome back to Toronto, of course. Always Thank good to you. have you guys here. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed this movie. I'm just going to put it hey, right thanks. there. I really, really did. And because it's so extraordinary, it's so different, and it's so unique. And for people, but for, it's hard for me to describe it. So I want you guys to tell us what it's about. Um, well, it's, <laughs> did you like Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol? It's basically... Basically that. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it, well, except with slightly cheaper slightly. special effects. Yeah. But just um, prudently budgeted yes. effects. I don't know. I don't know. How, I'm sorry. I guess I should start over. Yeah. No, uh, I, that I, doesn't I, help I, I, people who haven't it's, it's, seen it's okay, Ghost Protocol. It is, a hard, it is a hard thing to describe. Just about. Well, you know what? Let's start by saying the process. How, how did you guys even start with this or come up with this idea? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's complicated. I guess there's a, okay, so there really is a lot of going on in it, yeah. a lot of stories. Right. And they mingle together in a what seems like a chaotic way. But maybe the more you watch, the more the structure becomes apparent. The stories interrupting each other. Um, and the stories how, have something to do with each other. Yeah, and they, Even yeah, though at, at first glance they seem not to. So they you, all come from the same monomaniacal writers yeah. and um, they have things in common and I don't know and, they, and, they, and they're energized in ways that please me and the whole thing kind of has a nice I, I, we like the trajectory of, of this thing yeah. and, it's, and it's packed big it's, time as it's, ever it's narratively yeah. packed and we really wanted to make something that, that, that really carried people along and, and left them washed up on the other shore, panting yeah. at the end. So, and and I, I feel good about it. Yeah, and well, you know, in terms of just finding all the footage and going, like, what kind of um, was it painstaking? I mean, just just to put this thing together. Well, we shot it all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and cast it. It was, it was, it was a, a long, life-altering process. We started in 2010 researching wow. a, a lot of stories that um, were once feature films in various countries around the world, uh, films that later got lost somehow, destroyed, lost, uh, just misplaced or forgotten. And um, we decided to tap into this great mother load of, of narrative and use it as a starting point to write our own stories. And stories that would be haunted just because they were lost. We thought of the stories as sad spirits wandering the landscape of film history, and and now they just got their chance to throng the screen and get themselves told. And they had to pass through a medium, us, um, on their way to the screen, and so we ended up using our filmmaking voices to um, cohere yeah. these wildly disparate stories uh, until they were telling one story. Yeah, no, it's it's actually it's so it sounds cool. it sounds yeah. ridiculous no, or maybe <laughs> even maybe off-putting <laughs> for all I know, but I, I <laughs> do feel that it's yeah. that it, it it feels like an event to me. No, it, it, it's an event. It's an adventure, I think. Yeah. You know, for sure. Thanks, How thanks. does the collaborative effort work between the two of you? Adam, you want to try? Yeah, well, we we be, yeah. it begins like some films do in the writing, and so we wrote to I mean, first we researched together and then decided to start writing the the script together. I don't know that writing was the was the way the collaboration uh, sort of um, I don't know realized itself mm -hmm. at first. And then on set though Guy has a very distinct on set manner which he produces a lot of energy and chaos because he's otherwise he and you have a lot of inertia. So if you're going you can keep going, but if you sit down everything stops. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a nap, and you don't want to direct anymore. So yeah. you never sit down on set. You just keep the energy. Yeah, going. I don't allow myself. To and so sit on down. set, guy is very much the dominant figure, and we quietly discuss things every once in a while. But he's directing the energy. Once we have all the big mess of footage, because it is a mess by that point, because you shoot a lot. Right. That's when, when I, you know, take my place in the collaboration and. Um, we really discuss what to do, and we help with the editor. And yeah, the writing process, which is huge and tiring, was a real pleasure for me this time, even though it's hard, mm -hmm. because um, Evan encourages a frank, no, none of this Canadian passive-aggressive manipulation, none of this saying one thing but meaning another. He's very direct, yeah. and I really enjoyed the fact that he could be really direct without personally hurting my feelings ever, and uh, which was something new in my experience. And so uh, it just felt so good to be 
direct back and forth and be productive. And, and whenever we disagreed about something, it wasn't a matter of one of us convincing the other to take his idea. We usually f found, thanks to these really direct discussions, a, th a third um, uh, route to yeah. take that was much better than either idea we each had individually before. So it, in other words, it was thrilling, and, but exhausting. Oh, and, sure. and then, and then it's, it's true on the set, I was the putative director, but then in post-production, I always time my energy to run out on the very last shot mm -hmm. uh, of, of a shoot. And so I was left with nothing in the tank and Evan took over at that point, including mostly this, the structuring of the film, which is very complicated and hilariously complicated. Yes. It's almost just complicated for its own sake, uh, just to, um, I don't know. <laughs> to me, the punchline is, well, I, I don't want a spoiler, but I just yeah. like the, um, these really perverse, um, self-flat tiring pace uh, moments where it suddenly just takes a long time for someone to change into their clothes at a moment when the movie should be reaching a climax. <laughs> and it's really cool. It, okay, so what have you learned from him and what, or what was the best piece of advice you've ever gotten? From? Well, I don't know if Kigai dispenses advice okay. in Oh, Not so much as no, lament. It up. <laughs> yes, it's the size a lot. But yeah. but he actually he did teach me. I don't know if you know this, but you taught me something. It's um, hmm. that strange. If you have an idea that you like and it's not working, just throw it in the garbage because you'll just have another idea soon. Because you, I mean that's easy for you to say because you have new ideas every good or bad, often bad, but new <laughs> new yeah. ideas every really few bad. seconds. Yeah. And um, and it's easier to make new ideas if you're willing to throw out your old ideas. Yeah. So. That's the main lesson I've learned. From yeah, that. building up something on a on a rotten idea. Like I had one just, idea in 1991, and I'm not going to let it go. It's not a way to have new ideas. No, they just so, yeah. keep cracking. You, know, yeah. you, you have to have some ideas in the tank where you got to come back. Sure, yeah. Them, right, you know. Yeah, you right. give it another shot after some distance. Yeah. But I, I've, I've, you know, I've been around a lot of aspiring filmmakers. I've been an aspiring filmmaker my long time mm -hmm. uh, for a long time myself. But th you meet there's one or two species of people that just can't get let go, let go of that first idea. <laughs> And there's something wrong with it, and it's not going to work. Yeah. But they'll they'll let years go by, yeah. so we we only let a few minutes go by. All right, that's mm -hmm. okay. Well, congratulations, you oh, guys. Thank you. Really great. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. I really loved it. And best oh, of luck with it so much. And uh, always great talking to you. Thank, thank you. So you. Oh, very sweet.